Hi. Some years ago, I made a small application called Word Search. Um, and this was the perfect example for me to show off input validation in JavaFX. So what I did before this video, I downloaded it, I converted it into an IntelliJ project. This was originally created in uh, another IDE, NetBeans. So you need to convert it if you download that. So I downloaded it from my GitHub page. And now I'm going to expand it a bit because I think it's more interesting to do this with this example than starting from scratch and trying to do something like that. So this is the code that's interesting. So let me show the program itself. So when I run the program, we get this program. It doesn't really scale, but I have a list. It's here uh, of the British uh, language. It has, um, it's just a word list. And I load this into memory and then I can search it by typing letters like R, E, S, C, for example. And I can find all the words that begins with this. It can also search for contains and ends with and do things case sensitive and insensitive. Doesn't matter to make it case sensitive here as everything is non-capitalized, but, and then there are some limitations on the amount of results we want back. That That's basically what it can do. Originally, you would have to type something in and then you would have to then you would have to click search. So that's why it's made so that every time I press a button, it actually kind of presses the search button. So it's kind of cheating, but that explains the code. So let's go into the code. So what happens is that when I initialize the controller, I add a listener to the text property. And what I do, I listen for any changes to the text no matter if they're done by mouse, copy pasting, uh, dragging, dropping, whatever you do, this will trigger whenever the text changes. And then it calls this method called click search. And I, th that's not the purpose of this video, but click search was, as I said, originally the button and it uses a whole range like a business logic layer and the model and everything else. And there are some strategy pattern and things in here. I don't want to show that in this video. I'll, I'll do that in another video. But here it's it's all about this. So one of the ways beforehand that we could do um, this um, input validation was that we could use the listeners for that. So what we can do is, for example, we have the text query here. This is where we type in the text. So we could have something here like we could write in here, we could actually check what is the value of the text that we typed in. Because when we use the change, um, the, the listener changed listener, we get an observable, which is the observable string that is being observed itself. Then we have the old value that was before we changed the text. So if I press one letter on the keyboard, then it will actually, um, this will be the old value without that letter. And then we also have a new value, which is the value that it changes into. So here we have the rare, um, opportunity to actually change things around. So what we can do is we can do like a simple if sentence and look at what was the new value. And what we can do then is that we can check to see if the new value matches something. So let's say if the new value, for example, let's say we don't like the letter A. So we can say that if, if new value contains uh, an A, then we don't want it there. So we go back to the old value. So what we'll do then is, let's try just to return. I'll show you what happens then. So 
whenever there's an A, we just return, meaning we won't search. So let me show you that first because it's easier to show this when you can't see what I'm typing on the keyboard. So let me type something like B R A. And if I type, for example, C and E, now the search is not working at all. So this code actually halts searching whenever there's an A present. And if I remove the A from the sentence, all of a sudden it, it goes back and searches again, which is quite weird, but um, this is the result of that because it returns before going into this try catch block. So let's try to change it into, so we just can not type any A's in here. So if we check each and every time there's a change, if we check if it contains an A, we won't just remove the A, we'll actually go back to the old value. We can do this easily by saying text query dot set text, and then we go for old value. So that effectively means that if we copy paste or do anything with an A in it, it'll just go back to whatever was there before and still search. So if I type B R A, I don't know if you can hear it. No, my filter is working perfectly, so I don't think you can hear, but I'm typing the A right now. You can see it kind of flickering when I type the A. I can do any, any other letters, but A, it goes back. I can also show you that if I type, if I take an A from in here, like if, if I take this, now that's a capital A, we are checking only for, okay, I'll, I'll take this text and copy that into the query. Let me just type something first. I paste that and you can't see that, but I'm actually pasting it in right now, but it's actually removing because it has the bad letter A in it. So this is a pretty straightforward and easy way uh, to do this. So if this is what you're trying to achieve. The only thing is you're not looking at the change, you're looking at the entire query so of course, if you want to count the amount of A's or something like that, you can also do that. But it's not only looking at one letter at a time, it's actually looking at the old value of the text. Oh, sorry, the new value of the text. So this is often the way I've, I've seen it done, but in newer versions of JavaFX, there's actually a better way of doing this. So, so what we can do is, um, instead of doing it like this, let me just try to, then we could actually do something else because everywhere, now we have this text formatter thing here that is actually made for this. So whenever we want to check for input, um, validation, we should use the text formatter because it's it's a lot easier to use and that's actually suited for that purpose. So what we'll do, we'll create a new text formatter. We don't need to write object here. We can just, and then what we're going to do, we're going to say that we have a value called change and that value is a parameter for a an anonymous um, method that we're creating here. So what does it say here? Okay, let's see. So what we need to do here is that th the change that we get here is actually um, the changes to the text. So we can do a lot of other stuff here that we couldn't do up here. We can see what is the, we can set the range we can set anchors, we can do caret positions. I'm not going to go into all of that stuff. You can look up on that afterwards, but you can do a lot of stuff with this, a lot more complicated stuff than you can do up here. So let's try to do the same thing. So, so under change, we can see what is the change. So we can say get text. That will actually get the changes in the text. So if I copy paste it, uh, this up here, like called, it would have the entire called in here. 
But what we need to do here is we're going to say if the get text is equals an A, we will just return null. If it's if it doesn't uh, contain an A, we will return the change. So when we return null, it means that it doesn't change anything. And if we return the change that got in there in the first place, we'll just return whatever uh, was changed. So that would be equal to, um, if I press an A, it would be an A. So now I'm pressing B, I'm pressing C, and I'm pressing A. So now nothing happens when I press A. So this is one. So we could do it with other things like what if we wanted to limit so you couldn't put ampersands or slashes or backslashes or whatever you want to do in here. You can do that and you can use also normally you might want to use something like regular expressions for this. So you could, for example, say that it should contain um, something like numbers only or something like that. You could use a regular expression for that. So it's very powerful for a lot of things. So let's say that I could even do something weird. Like I could say, if it equals A, then instead of just returning null, not doing anything, I could just say, okay, whenever I'm pressing an A, that's okay, but I want it to be capitalized. So I can say, change set text to a capitalized A, and now I can actually show you that if I type an A, nothing happens. If I type, oh, that's because, sorry, I shouldn't return null. Try again. So if I type B, R, and then A, it automatically makes it um, a capitalized A. If I try to do a capitalized A, I can do that, but I cannot just press A. It will always be capitalized. So that's kind of an interesting uh, a small change to do. But as you can probably see, this is, this is quite an easy way to do that. And you can also see there's a lot of features in here. I'm not going to go into them but with these carrot positions and control carrots, all of this stuff. Look it up if you need uh, more complex ones. The other thing you could do is you can use something like um, a regular expression. I can show that real quick. So for example, um, instead of using the equals up here, um, we could actually say get text and we could say something like instead of equals we can say matches and then we need to put a regular expression here and if we then put something like um, we would like to have a number from 0 to 9 um, and then we use the star notation, something like that. So let's see what that does. So we don't want to change uh, the, the text to A. Um, we only want to return change if we press one of these, otherwise we just return null. So let's try that. So if I type A, B, C, anything, but if I type numbers, I can actually do any number in here. But I cannot type any letters at all. So this means when you type this 0 to 9, it means it can have any number uh, from 0 to 9 repeated uh, any, any number of times. 
And you can find regular expressions like this on the internet and go more in-depth into it if you want to. You can find, for example, regular expressions to check uh, email addresses to see if they are valid or not. Um, you can also, in the text formatter, you, you can use like um, text query text formatter property. And then you can do you can actually use the text format a property. You can add a listener to that and you can ch check if it's valid or not. And if it's not valid, then you could also have something pop up here saying uh, there's something wrong with your email address or something like that. Or you could do it directly in here if you want to. So that was just a small uh, introduction to especially this text format. Uh, you can find this in a lot of places where they use the change listener, but I think the text format is uh, better suited in most cases. So I would definitely go for that. So that was it for this uh, small video on the input validation in JavaFX.